So there I was about five minutes ago sitting on my couch, staring at the ceiling. <laughs> and um, I suddenly all at once remembered, sort of remembered, half remembered a bunch of dreams I've been having <laughs> lately over the past couple of days, maybe about the last week or so. And I remembered that on the astral in my dream time, I have been doing some kind of work on the eighth dimension. Having some kind of experience of improving, tweaking, tuning, building. Something to do with the eighth dimensional structure of our universe. And I think the reason I like, <laughs> I'm having such a strange moment right now, okay? I'm having such a strange moment because I'm suddenly, I'm like remembering little bits from these dreams and I'm remembering the headspace I was in, like the state of consciousness that I was in in these dreams um, where it all made sense and I understood exactly what was going on and exactly what I was doing, but I, I ha I'm not quite able to translate this to my human mind in my waking state as I am right now. I'm just getting this weird glimpse into that state of consciousness, right? And, and there's a little bit of a gap that I'm not, I feel like I'm not translating properly between that state of consciousness where I am able to be a disembodied consciousness working on the eighth dimension and, you know, my human self sitting here um, at a table, right? And that's why I turn on the camera. I'm coming to you guys because I know that you can help me figure this out because now my human self is so curious, right? What is going on with the eighth dimension? <laughs> why does it need fixing? Um, what, what are we doing? And um, I know that this is going to help me because when I tune into your guys' energy, you bring all of this energy, experience, data, your consciousness, all of it to the vortex of this reading. And uh, I, I like you guys help me. <laughs> you, you help me figure out what's going on. So that's why I'm here. Um, you're helping me figure this out just by watching this video. And, you know, this is an incredibly niche thing, right? Uh, anybody who is seeing this video, if it's, if it's, if it seems interesting or resonates, right? It doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter what year you're going to be spanned out through all, you know, decades and decades of time. Um, but you have something to do with this, right? This eighth dimensional project you, you have on in some level been contributing to this working on this some level of your consciousness knows about this and you're bringing it to the table um right here right now so i'm just gonna start drawing some cards um just to not not really to read the cards um just to get some something to reflect some information back at me so i can figure out like what is the deal with the eighth dimension? What is the up, what is up with the eighth dimension? What have we been doing with it and why? Okay, so it has to do with some type of bottleneck, a bottleneck of energy, like the eighth dimension itself is, is a bottleneck point, even if you were to imagine um, like an hourglass, right? It's like the eighth dimension is the narrow point in the hourglass. So a lot of cosmic energy has been getting stuck there because, you know, it's coming down from all the higher realms and all of that. And then it gets stuck in the eighth dimension. The eighth dimension, um, I'm seeing if it helps um, for you to feel into like the function of the eighth dimension in the universe, um, feel into fourth, I'm sorry, I said four because of the, I pulled the four of cups here, um, but it is, what am I talking about? Eighth house in astrology and Scorpio energy, right? Is that it's the, um, the portal between life and death, <laughs> the portal between life and death, you know, death as a portal or the, it's the translation point between the lower realms and the higher realms. There's almost this impression that the eighth dimension doesn't even really exist because it, it's like a transitional point. It is a funnel. It, it, it's like it, it's like a wormhole. It's like a bridge between 
70 and below and 90 and above. Um, what I'm seeing is that the, the 8D is really important. And the thing is right now it's been this bottleneck. Um, it's, re it's really funny. So in my home city, Vancouver, and like all, all the area around Vancouver, right, the greater Vancouver area, um, has lots of bridges, lots of bridges because there's rivers and, and water and stuff. So there's bridges everywhere. And but the highways are really poorly designed because everywhere you go, there's typically at least two major roads, right? We don't we only have one freeway. So it's not like a lot of freeways like like in US cities, right? Um, but lots of highways and stuff. Um, and typically, you have two major highways. <laughs> and then they all go over one bridge. And the problem is that, you know, if it's like a four lane highway and a four lane highway, it, the bridge might only have four lanes and then everybody has to like merge, right, and get over this bridge, <laughs> something like that, right? Um, and so Vancouver has a huge massive problem with the traffic. It's always because of a bridge. Like you, you spend your life sitting at a bridge because the bridges are all bottlenecks because the highways are poorly designed, right? <laughs> poorly planned out. And the, like that's the metaphor here. That's essentially what's happening with the eighth dimension. We have all of this... Um, it would actually be coming down, right? Well, but they're saying it's actually, it goes both ways. So to completely take uh, any notions that we have about the higher realms being higher or above and the lower realms, the physical realms being lower or below, they're like, it's not that at all. That's just the human linear way of thinking. You know, we think of up and down, but there is nothing like that. You could turn it sideways. You could turn it any way you want. It's just, we only use upper and lower, higher and lower as, you know, a convenience for the human mind. I will probably continue to use that language, but just, you know, putting that out there that that's not actually, that's only for the human mind, right? So it's going both ways. It's this bottleneck of energy, this bottleneck of energy where energy is trying to come down, energy is trying to come down and it's getting stuck. Meanwhile, energy from the lower realms, which includes us, right, includes physical earth <laughs> um, is trying to go up, trying to go up, but it, it gets stuck. And it's not like it actually gets stuck. Eventually it does go through, but there is this bottleneck, this slowdown. Um, and this has served a purpose. This has been part of how simply how the universe has structured itself. It's like it's like, we don't need to think of this as something wrong or something bad. We don't need to pathologize this. It's just the way it has been. Um, and it was like that for a reason. I think it has something to do with actually separating the two areas, right? Because imagine if you're like building a universe, right? You might want to actually separate a part that is um, under development <laughs> so that it's not all just glomming together, right? It, it's exactly like, you know, maybe you don't want to, if you, when you're, you know, a young adult and you move out of your parents house you don't typically just like move next door right? you typically want a little bit of distance from that right some little bit of distance and you might even like it if you live across the bridge from your parents because then there's space and you know you can communicate you can you know have dinner on Sundays but you're not like right in their backyard right so it's kind of like that it's like it was actually good and useful and necessary in many different ways to have this kind of separation but it's like that is rapidly becoming irrelevant because of the way the universe is evolving and the way the universe itself is ascending right it's not just like earth consciousness is shifting the entire universe is shifting and that this bottleneck this bottleneck in the, in the eighth dimension is no longer um serving us right and so one of the things we have been doing is expanding the capacity of the eighth dimension to pass energy through it right it needs to literally expand it's like the it's like the eighth dimension has been small okay i need a piece of paper Okay, so I mean, I'm sure you you are all already able to envision this, but just for visual reference, right? That is the bottleneck and we are like expanding it. And from what I'm seeing right now, it's like when we go out on the astral at night in our sleep state, we go out and we like attach ourselves <laughs> to like a little, a little piece and then we we just draw it out in that direction and that bring that draws it out and imagine if we have like a million zillion trillion you know i don't know how many <laughs> a lot right of people doing this drawing it out expanding it drawing it out expanding it drawing it out expanding it right then this is you know it's going to eventually look something like this and it's going to be more of a stabilized 
wormhole <laughs> or like a nice, nice smooth tunnel, <laughs> right? A nice smooth tunnel. If you are driving through a tunnel, you don't typically prefer the tunnel to be really windy. I mean, if you're a passenger with a really skilled driver, it might be fun to have a cool and dark and twisty, uneven tunnel, right? Or if you're walking through it. But if you're driving, you're typically gonna want, <laughs> most people would want a nice smooth tunnel, right? And that would be particularly good if there's a lot of traffic, right? If you have tons and tons of cars going through this tunnel all day, you're gonna want it to be wide, to be broad, to be straight, so that all those cars can get through. <laughs> Same, this is this is like the, the, the data channel, right? The data channel. So what we're actually doing is like <laughs> stabilizing the, the tunnel of the eighth dimension, stabilizing the tunnel of the eighth dimension. And like these little bits that we do, like when we go out there and we attach ourselves and then grow outward, this is mirrored with our human growth. This is mirrored with our human growth. Um, so this, does, this, this, this isn't exclusive to the eighth dimension. This is part of how the universe um, like this is part of why we are alive. This is part of why we have these strange, strange physical human lives um, because it, it, it's like our human lives are an, a way of experiencing and understanding the details of what we're doing, right? Um, if, if that makes any sense. So it's like on, an, on this 8, 8D, you know, non-physical energy level, we are like grabbing a piece of the structure of the universe and pulling it outwards on a human level. How is that reflecting? How are we doing that on the human level? This is like facing a challenge in your life, right? You have some kind of problem, <laughs> whatever your problem is. Like, let's say like you just, it could be anything. Let's just use money because that's an easy example, right? Say you need more money, you want more money. And so you attach yourself to the problem of money. You've attached yourself to this and there would be like a part in this eighth dimensional structure of this tunnel that would correspond to money. Like vibrationally speaking, it would correspond. And then you set about on your journey to make more money. And then that inches you out, <laughs> that inches you out. That's literally like you're expanding your abundance on the physical and that expands out this the wall of this tunnel, right? And it, and it's not just about expansion, it's also about strengthening it because imagine also if this were like a muscle. I mean, there's no way of getting getting around um, the metaphor of thinking about this is like a birth canal, right? <laughs> thinking about this is the birth canal that has to dilate because um, it's like really that, like we're talking eighth house Scorpio energy um, and like the wormhole where the energy of life pours through, right? This is like a cosmic birth canal. So uh, these muscles, right? <laughs> you can even just imagine like a woman's muscles that need to be, um, like can be strengthened, right? Can be strengthened. This is, <laughs> this is really funny, but you could think of um, a woman's muscles. If she were to have muscle problems in her pelvic floor, right? Then she could have, that would like have a cascading effect of all of these different, um, pain problems and lack of stability in her body if simply like maybe just one one muscle in the pelvic floor you know many different pelvic floor muscles but if one muscle in the pelvic floor is weaker than the other ones that creates an imbalance and then the entire wormhole would be destabilized right so funny um kind of a funny metaphor but i think it, it really applies so we we need like all of the energies to be st uh, like stabilized and strengthened and they need to be kind of the same level of strength because you know that's actually maybe why the wormhole has been bottlenecked for, like this because it's like these muscles, so to speak, like this energy right here at the bottleneck point has, they have been weaker. That's why they've kind of con concaved in on themselves. They've caved in on themselves. So in not only are we like pulling it back out to expand it, that's actually strengthening this like energy muscle. I, I can I can actually like see this kind of wall, like the wall of the eighth dimensional wormhole. It, you could think of it like a muscle. I think that really... That's helping me anyway, imagine this. So, you know, <sighs> then there's also a thing about fears, right? A thing about fears because if we're thinking eighth house, Scorpio, there's a ton of stuff going in there with fears, um, learning to face fears, release fears because fear, like um, who's seen or read Dune, right? Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is also the thing that weakens muscles, right? If you're afraid, of walking, <laughs> then your leg muscles would atrophy and you'd be unable to walk, right? So there's also something here of like facing fears. Whenever we have an experience of facing and releasing a fear, 
we edge this out because we are strengthening this wall, right? And then we bring it out and everything gets more closer to being this stabilized wormhole. <laughs> so if this is making any sense, um, something else I am sensing with this is this directly is, this also has to do with like our, our manifestations, right? Like our, our manifestations in the physical because um, our ability to materialize, to materialize thoughts into things or to make the unreal real, because I also see this 8, 8D, 8th house Scorpio energy as the process through which me, we make the unreal real or through which we make the unseen seen, right? Bringing it through. This also has to do like how much energy we can release in the physical. It's like manifestation has to do with energy release, with energy release. And this is not effort. This is not effort. Like they're making a very clear distinction um, in my mind because I, I typically like, you know, I'm like a Capricorn um, person and with a Virgo South node. Um, and it's like, I, I associate manifestation or like making I associate making things happen like naturally like you know with um effort I think everything should be done through willpower and effort and thought and I've of course learned that that doesn't really work out so well so there, it's like it's 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 a release of energy a release not not a working of energy not a forcing of energy not doing work not m using willpower just a natural release of energy um and that actually that that also stabilizes like stabilizes the wormhole stabilizes these walls and this um that really hit me the other day when I was watching uh, like Stargate SG-1, that old 90s show. <laughs> um, and they said something, right? They were looking at the ring of the Stargate, right? They were looking at just a big old metal ring, right? And if you haven't seen the show, right, they just have this big metal ring. And when they like turn it on, they pour a bunch of energy into it. And then it like stabilizes a, like a portal, right? And it all goes all shimmery. And then they jump through it to go to different planets. Um, and, um, one of the scientists like looked at the portal and was like, wow, I, it's unreal to think how much energy the portal must release in order to stabilize a wormhole or like something like that, right? It was something about, it's an incredible amount of energy that must be released in order to stabilize the portal or the wormhole, however you want to think about it, right? It, it, it really like that really clicked and clicked for me. And I was like, it's all about energy release. That is how we stabilize the portal. I, I'm, I noticed that I'm kind of using wormhole and portal a little bit interchangeably, which is not really, it's probably not accurate in terms of getting technical with English language. And it also doesn't entirely reflect how I think about it. So let me just take a second. So basically for my personal use <laughs> of the language, I think of a portal as literally just like, like a doorway, like it's like a one-to-one, -one, it's poof, you just walk through, right? There's no like transit time and, and there's no translation process. It's like a one-to-one. -one. It's literally like you walking through a door, right? And when I think of wormhole, I think of more like a tunnel, right? I think of a wormhole like a tunnel. Um, There is like, there is travel time and there is travel space, not really in the human sense of space and time, but there is a traveling through space time um, and it is more like a tunnel experience and yeah, so that's how I use those words in my mind. Um, anyway, so what does this have to do with our manifestations? So as we, this is happening simultaneously on both levels because when you heal something or activate something inside of yourself, it is also happening on a collective level. And as you, as something heals and activates on a collective level, it is also happening within yourself. It is both at the same time. So as the eighth dimensional construct widens its wormhole, <laughs> gets rid of the bottleneck and stabilizes its tunnel, stabilizes its passage, stabilizes its walls. Um, it can release more energy, which means more data, more consciousness, more light can flow through it from up there to down here and from down here to up there, right? Also on a human level, the more we can release our energy, the more we can release our energy, the more we will materialize the things we want to manifest. So 
if you've got a creative project you're working on, if you're trying to manifest a new car or just to have a new life upgrade, it, the key is actually how you release your energy, how you just let it out. How, how do you just let it out, let it out? Because it's all, the energy is all there inside of you. It's like you've received all the energy. You, you, it's not the problem of receiving it. It's like, just imagine all the energy has been like pouring down, pouring down, pouring down, right? And here now this, I've been using this as a, you know, a silly little scribble depicting the eighth dimension, but here, this is also you. It's like, this is also you, right? I could draw like a little stick person here, right? Yay. <laughs> little stick person. It, this is also you. It's, it's like humans somehow are also represented by the same idea, right? Here you are receiving, receiving, receiving. Sometimes we feel like we're not receiving the inspiration, like we're not receiving the energy, like we're not receiving the idea. And it's like, no, we are, <laughs> we are, we are, we are. I mean, sometimes you can have a, like something going on with your crown and it can make you feel like you're not really accessing it and stuff like that. But for the most part, right, this energy, we are receiving it. We are receiving it and it's all like bottlenecking inside of our, I don't know if it's correct to say our bodies, but I mean, I think the capacity of the physical body to channel and utilize and release this much energy there that is that's like a separate thing because the evolution of the human body that that's like that's a whole different thing <laughs> so we'll just put that aside for now but let's think about in terms of our energy bodies right the, the, all the different iterations of our light body it's all coming in and then it's how do we release it right how do we get it through the bottleneck we need to release the energy we need to release the energy to stabilize the portal because if we release this energy and it needs to be released in like all around right like maybe you have one I mean everybody right everybody has one way that they are more proficient at releasing energy right maybe it's through sports maybe it's through nurturing your family maybe it's through your creative project or maybe it's just through working a lot right whatever it is you might have one area of your life where you can release a ton of energy, right? You can release a ton of energy, but that, that like, look, now everything's all lopsided. Imagine if, look at this circle. This is, the circle is like up here, right? This is, if it were like this, if you could imagine, you know, like <laughs> this is where the circle is. So I've accidentally drawn like a cross section. Is that what you call it? I think, I think you guys see what I mean, right? So now we're looking at this wormhole. This would be going through the tunnel, right? Through the tunnel, through the tunnel. And if you have, Maybe you have two areas of your life where you're really good at releasing energy. But what has happened here? What happened? This is how we got a bottleneck <laughs> for being, because we were imbalanced, right? We were imbalanced. We were only good at two different places. We're only good at two different places. And it's made this weird bottleneck. The energy is only, is only going, it has to like navigate around our areas of strength. Isn't that weird? that you think of your strengths as the things that will help you manifest. But looking at what I just drew here, if we had energy coming through these areas of strength or we have all this energy being released, all this other, other energy that's trying to flow down through you from the higher realms, it actually has to go around your strength. It's like, it's like these bits here represent, could almost represent your ego and your ego is comprised of your strengths, but that's actually getting in the way of you channeling divine intelligence <laughs> um but so what would happen if we could become if we could release this energy like you know in a completely stable way all the way around in a completely balanced way all the way around right if you could just imagine me having colored that all in and look i even accidentally drew like an iris which is interesting if this were to be in a circle like that so now, now you've created a portal, right? Just like in Stargate, it's all shimmery <laughs> and looks all liquidy and you can jump in it. And then it is this one-to-one -one portal. So maybe this is something, cause I keep messing, I keep mixing up the way I'm using portal and wormhole. Maybe we are actually, what we have had, what we have had with the eighth dimension, we had a wormhole, we had a tunnel um, that 
linearized and translated energy to a certain extent. I don't think things on an 8D level are very linear, but there is still like a linearization process happening since it had to go through a tunnel, had to go through a wormhole, it had to have transit space time, right? But if we can stabilize and release energy symmetri symmetrically, evenly, and in balance in all directions, now you have stabilized a portal and now it can just travel through one to one. So I uh, think another thing that we're doing is we are essentially pouring in a ton of energy into the eighth dimension right now. And that's not just coming from us, that's also coming from above, right? They're like that, that I remember from my dreams of almost like <laughs> the, the human equivalent would be like grabbing a bunch of really high powered extension cords and like plugging it in to <laughs> to something right to just feed it more power to feed it more power because the 8d needs to become this portal um and then so much more energy will be able to pass through because you won't need to have all of these cars like getting clogged up at the bridge um every car will just be going along the highway hit the portal and then just automatically transport itself <laughs> through portaling right to wherever it wants to be so that drastically 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 improves the flow of energy between the higher realms and the lower realms and so if you can do this on a personal level, right? Get your energy release to be balanced in all areas of your life, right? You know, maybe we got career, maybe we've got family, maybe we've got self. Oh, I just realized that it'd be like the Zodiac, right? The Capricorn, Cancer, Aries, and Libra, right? Other. And of course you could add all kinds of other things in there, right? But those are just the cardinal directions that pop out for me, right? If you can stabilize your energy release to be even between career and family and like taking care of yourself and taking care of others, right? Committing to yourself, committing to others, committing, working on your family, working on your career, working on your create creativity um, and working on your like financial abundance, all of those things. If you can get this stabilized in all areas of your life, essentially by becoming this like, like a renaissance person right? or this like super person who has mastered all areas of life, then your manifestations just start portaling through, portaling through because you have mastered any energy release and stabilized your portal. And then things just start popping out. Right? Um, it occurs to me that this doesn't need to happen on a singular basis, right? If you, if you choose to do this, individually as like a single human you can do that but i don't think that is everyone's path i don't think that is everyone's path because i'm getting big big shivers on that big 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 shivers big confirmation okay so if you're sitting there going like i don't know how to i can't do everything <laughs> it's like you're not supposed to okay that's why we exist in that's why everything is collective that's why there is like humans always work in groups right could be pairs could be pairs right um, you and your partner, right? Maybe you have this split up, right? You, you've, you've done a division of like responsibility or maybe you just naturally came that way, right? If you're a couple and you're like yin and yang, well, then you come together and together you create this portal, right? This can be done, this can be done with a partner, right? With, with a partner. This can also be done with a group of people, like a group of souls. And this can be like soul family who don't even know each other and, but they are, and yet they are, doing this together. I mean, that's us, right? This is what we're doing. <laughs> Any, anybody who really resonates with my videos, right? We are one very specific soul group and we are working on this type of thing all the time because we all have different strengths and it is all coming together to stabilize these types of portals. And I think as I'm talking about this, this is a, this is a method of portal stabilization <laughs> that I think applies to um, many different ways of thinking about portals like how if you're trying if you like if you're thinking about how to make a portal <laughs> in your life right if you're trying to figure out how to make a portal it's like th think about some of the things I've been saying here it's going to give you some clues um yeah so and this is this also happens like you know on the, the eighth d level of you know we are stabilizing this stretching out this wormhole expanding this wormhole so that it can stabilize into a portal that's happening like on a universal level that is like the universe coming together to do this because it needs like bits of consciousness from all of these different areas it needs bits of consciousness from the whole universe different vibrations of consciousness different calibrations of consciousness right in order to stabilize this portal so it's kind of like the entire i mean it is it is the entire universe is coming together to stabilize and expand the eighth dimension so that 
it's no longer a bottleneck. And so even so that it is no longer really like a tunnel wormhole, it, it is when we're done with it. And I don't know the time factor on that, <laughs> but um, eventually, ultimately it is, it, it just becomes a portal where data and consciousness just passes right through without this translation um, bottleneck situation. So, <laughs> well, I don't know if any of that made any sense, but I can definitely say it helped me figure out what, like, what was going on in those dreams. Um, and I knew, I knew that if I came, came to you guys, that you guys would help me remember and figure it out. And we did it. We did it. Now I have at least a little bit more of an idea of the adventures I've been going on while I'm asleep. <laughs> so I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.